to everyone, and I'm very happy that I'm observer in Goa rather than anywhere else. The task before us is to get the party battle ready for the elections in early next year. My initial assessment is that the political atmosphere is extremely favorable to the Congress party. By all accounts, including accounts which I read in the media, there is an expectation that there will be a change in government and a new government led by the Congress party will be formed after the elections. If that is the expectation of the people of Goa, I want to assure the people of Goa that we will not disappoint you. We will get the party ready for elections and we will present to the people of Goa a set of candidates who will be loyal, faithful to the ideology, hardworking, and will serve the interests of the people of Goa. I'm absolutely certain that we will find many more candidates than we can accommodate who will fulfill these qualities and fulfill the aspirations of the people of Goa. In my meetings with the party workers, and I've had extensive meetings, I've met several hundred people so far, and I will continue to meet them both during this visit and my next visit, which will be after about seven or ten days. I've held out only one assurance. My colleagues and I have assured all our workers one thing, that every decision concerning the elections will be taken in consultation with the active members in each block, which is the same as each constituency. Every decision concerning elections will be taken in consultation with the active members of the bloc or constituency, and that includes the Youth Congress, the NSUI, the Mahila Congress, the Seva Dal, the Minorities Wing, and all other wings of the party. It is with the active consultation of the active members of the party that decisions will be taken and implemented. And I'm sure as the workers have welcomed this announcement, the people of Goa will also welcome this announcement, and we will present a set of candidates who are worthy of the people of Goa. Thank you. Yes, I'll take a few questions. Uh, you can ask in any language, but I can only s reply in English. Uh, is there any uh, uh, discussion on uh, two things? Uh, one is alliance with like-minded party. Another, they were talking about changing leadership, and people are saying that there are apprehension that you might uh, replace Giri Chodanta with another leader. I'm not here to replace anyone by myself anyway. So. so. These are organizational matters which are discussed and decided at the appropriate time. That is not my agenda. As I said, my agenda is only to get the party battle ready for the elections. And that is the task which my colleague Dinesh Kundurao, the three observers, and I have undertaken. Again, to repeat, we will get the party ready for elections. Again, 
that is not the mandate now. Uh, those are matters which will be discussed if necessary at the appropriate time. But at the moment, it is to get the party battle ready in all the 40 constituencies. There is no rebellion in Chhattisgarh. <laughs> there is no rebellion in uh, Punjab. You're perhaps mixing up Afghanistan. <laughs> There's no rebellion. These are internal matters which are discussed within the party. Was, did you describe the Karnataka change of guard as a rebellion? No, no. Did you, dis did you describe the Karnataka change of guard as a rebellion? I didn't describe ah. it at all. <laughs> that's, that's right. <laughs> Sir, in the next minute, are you going to meet the regional party leaders of Goa because they are interested to meet you? No, no. They are welcome to meet me. Uh, anyone is welcome to meet me. Uh, I'm sure they have met with uh, other Congress leaders, including my colleague Dinesh Kundurao. If anyone wants to meet me, uh, they're most welcome to meet me. Uh, I love meeting people. So there's one thing here about, uh, especially in Goa, Mr. Rani, it seems you have met a lot of uh, workers, everybody is saying that we won't be the Congress mandate and all. Suddenly these people jump into another party. Why we should believe in Congress party? You should believe in Congress party because Congress party can give you good governance. Congress party can lift thousands or lakhs of people out of poverty. Congress party will promote industrialization. Congress party will give jobs to our youths. Congress party will preserve the environment. So that is why you must believe in the Congress party. Yes, from time to time, there have been occasions when a few people in which the party trusted have betrayed the party. I'm not denying that. But the Congress party's history and record is a history and record that is far richer and far wider than these uh, occasional betrayals. But we will select candidates this time and present to the people of Goa, a set of candidates who will be loyal, faithful to ideology, and will serve the interests of the people of Goa. As I said, every decision concerning elections will be taken in consultation with the bloc constituency active members. So we will go by the views of the active members of that constituency. How would you uh, comment on this, uh, that some of the senior members, the Congress leaders are a bit vocal as far as uh, structural changes of the Congress party in Goa, not taking up proper issues and everything? Well, that may not be entirely correct. Congress party has taken up issues both in the legislature and outside the legislature. Congress party has taken to the streets. If what you intend by that question is we must be more vocal, more articulate, more aggressive, I agree with you. Sir, we have five MLAs right now, but some of them are not even stepping in Congress House. They are not seeing it in any function. They are not in Congress. I, I assume that uh, the room I occupied yesterday, along with my colleagues, was temporarily a Congress house. <laughs> Every MLA stepped into that room. No, we have not seen that. Yesterday, I'm talking about yesterday. Sir. Everyone stepped into that room and everybody met me. And they will continue to meet me. And I will invite you at the next meeting also. Sir, you are talking about being battle ready, but have you decided who will be captain, who will be leading the entire flock, and who will be actually leading the battle? And you see 
In 40 constituencies, we'll have 40 commanders leading the battle. I'm glad you uh, think I'm competent to answer the question. Thank you. But on a graver note, India's economy is at its lowest ebb. Please remember that last year we ended with negative growth. The GDP in constant prices declined sharply. Although the government talks about a V-shaped recovery, there is no recovery forget whether it's V-shaped or any other shape. And the GDP at the end of this year will not go back to the pre-pandemic level of 2019-20. 2020-21 was a decline from 2019-20. 2021-22 will show an apparent increase over the last year's GDP, but it will not go back to the pre-pandemic level. It's only when our GDP goes back to the pre-pandemic level, you can call it a recovery. I hope I'm making myself clear. If you slide so much and say 10 steps and you climb three steps, you're not at the pre-pandemic level. You have to climb back 10 steps. That is not going to happen in 21-22. It may happen in 22-23. But then everything is dependent upon how many foolish decisions this government will take. Demonetization was a foolish decision. The flawed GST was a foolish decision. The refusal to give cash doles to the poorest 20 or 25 percent of India during the pandemic was the most foolish decision that has been taken. Refusal to increase public expenditure in a year of pandemic was a very foolish decision. And day before yesterday, they've announced another foolish decision, namely that India's assets will be monetized. It's an, another euphemism for given away, will be monetized for what? For 1.5 lakh crore a year? Therefore, the recovery in 21-22 will not take us back to the pre-pandemic level. The recovery in 22-23 may, may take us back to the pre-pandemic level, provided this government does not take any more foolish decisions. Well, as I've said, I have, in consultation with my colleagues, I have laid out a principle. If that is different or same as the earlier principle, it's for you to decide. But this principle will be followed. Every election-related decision will be taken in consultation with the active members of every block or constituency. It cannot be months in advance. Uh, uh, there are pros and cons of doing that. But on balance, it cannot be months in advance. But I agree with the general sentiment. It should be announced sufficiently early to give the candidate enough time to campaign. That part I entirely agree, and all my colleagues agree. All my colleagues agree with that. Sir, the last time, the one, the one people are different of the two, uh, one, uh, one of the uh, tourism sector and the mining sector. You both have collapsed now. How is it being? Well, uh, we will spell it out on our manifesto. And if the new Goga, Govan government uh, engages me as a consultant, I will <laughs> advise the new Govan government. 
But there are ways in which tourism can be revived, the ways in which mining can be revived without af affecting the environment. These are not uh, uh, unknown uh, areas. Other countries have addressed the problem, and we can address the problem. We can address both the sharp dip in tourism and the practical closure of mining can be addressed in scientific and in acceptable ways. The present government is incompetent to address it, but I believe that the new government that we will be able to present if the people vote for us will be able to address it. So, the representation of women will also be considered X percentage of... I beg your pardon? The representation for women in uh, allotment of tickets for Congress? Well, frankly, I cannot indicate any percentage. It depends upon the number of aspirants among women. And again, I repeat, each constituency will have a big say. The active members of each block and constituency will have practically the final say in an election-related decision. Does Congress keep its events, uh, options open? Mm. The options will open sometime or other. When the options open, it's open. The <laughs> <laughs> Goa government has uh, decided to do mining corporation and they have started the process. How do you see? See, announcements made within six months of election are usually bogus announcements. Whether you will change state president? Already asked. Are asked? Okay. Sir, after you spoke about giving sufficient time to candidates to prepare, what in your assessment is sufficient time? Depends, you see. Depends on the size of the constituency. You more or less got an idea of Yeah. This is a fairly compact constituency. I'm... I am uh, extremely happy and amazed by the fact that the entire constituency of electorate of Goa adds up to about 12 lakh voters. I have a, I have a small constituency called Shivaganga, which has only 16 lakh voters. <laughs> Therefore, it depends on the constituency. What is the time required to campaign among 30,000 voters? Tell me. What is the time required? Sir, I don't have to prepare the Congress strategy. No, no, I'm not asking you strategy. What is the time required to reach out to 30,000 voters? Sufficient time will be available for the candidate to reach out to 30,000 voters, if necessary, by knocking on every door. By knocking on every door. Repeat that. Sir, what do you think BGP party has start campaigning? They have to campaign early because they have to get over all the lies that they have propagated over the last four and a half years. You said every ruling party has to start early in opposition. No. I said BJP has to start early because it has to deconstruct the lies that has spread over the last four and a half years. In 2017, Goa has given mandate to Congress to 17 MLA. The still Congress could not be able to form the government with these parties which are trying to alliance with the Congress now. So what step will you take now? No. As I said, alliances, when the, when the talk opens, the option is open. We will see at that time. At the moment, our task is to get 40 candidates battled ready for elections. That's the mandate given to us. We will fulfill that mandate. So from yesterday, you are meeting various party leaders and everything. Is it easy or difficult task to get party candidates? It's not a difficult task. There is a groundswell of support. There are a lot of people who are aspirants for candidates. Uh, there are, see, Goa, fortunately, is a highly literate state. Everybody whom I meet is extremely articulate, educated. So I think uh, this is a uh, this is a fairly easy catchment area to identify good candidates. Sir, 
Oh, the challenges uh, are in the challenges in every election. Uh, identifying the right candidate, uh, mollifying the disappointed aspirant, getting them to work together as a team, and finding the resources so that they can campaign. And in a small constituency like each Goa constituency, to go back to old-fashioned campaigning of ringing every doorbell, knocking on every door. At the same time, use the modern technology, the social media, to reach out to the larger population. See, a disappointed voter is disappointed, yes, when a Congress candidate crosses over, he's disappointed. But in the last four and a half years, he's even more disappointed with the performance of the present government. He's even more disillusioned by the failure of the present government. So that voter is our natural voter this time. And we have to only assure him, as I am assuring now, I assured a few minutes earlier, I am assuring now, that we will present a set of candidates who are loyal, who are faithful to the ideology of the party and the policies of the party, and who will serve the best interests of the people of Goa. Okay, thank you. Okay, sorry, can Last question. Because you're wearing a green shirt. <laughs> 40? Yeah. And they're no more than 40, no? <laughs> they're more than 40, I'll be happy. 40, yes. What do you think about anti defection Anti? It's a it's become a defective law now. Anti defection law has now become a very defective law. 